Good morning world. I can feel some raindrops. I can feel some raindrops too. But it's quite refreshing, especially on such a hot morning. Yeah, I'm going to mix some shells on a rock. Okay, go for it. It's weird because we've got blue skies and white clouds, but it is actually raining on us. Can you see the big stone mountain over there? Oh, it's like a stone tower. Still see it. Okay. Shell's on top of it. Okay, we'll see if somebody's put a shell on top. Look at that water. It's like looking at a mirror. The very first time we walked over to the island, the water looked like this, and I had the drone out, and it looked really, really cool. We should be releasing those videos over the next couple of weeks. It's going to be strange to see our experiences from when we first arrived here now. Here comes Mummy. She's brought gold with her too. One thing I've noticed is now that we're moving into the summer months here on Shargal, the breeze has gone. It was such a windy island when we first got here and we were saying it's so much like Portugal with the surfing vibe and the windiness. But now it's just hot, humid and still. Hey Story, you were right. Someone has put a shell on the top. It's not green, no. But you did say, is there going to be a shell on the top? And there is. Just like in Moana, look. See? Oh. That's really cool. What do you think? Nice. It is nice, isn't it? Can I get that up there? Uh, somebody's put it up there nicely, so I think we should leave it up there. Oh, just right. She was right. When she saw the tower in the distance, she said, I wonder if there's going to be a shell on the top. <laughs> what do you think? I found something in there. No. <laughs> it's a bit broken anyway, isn't it? Oh, it's a good tower, isn't it? How much are you sweating already? Starting to. <laughs> it's nine o'clock in the morning. When I first left, I thought, oh, it's lovely and cool. But yeah. As soon as you start walking, <sighs> man, air. there's no sun either, so you thought it'd be all right, but you can really feel it. Yesterday we were talking about how there were loads of noises around, and there were boats, and it sounded like people were coming back. And this morning again, it's like we're back in the post-apocalyptic world with absolutely nothing going on, absolute silence. I love it. There's a few people walking out there. Oh yeah, that's just the fishermen though, isn't it? They were always here, <laughs> fishing away. I was talking with Marius yesterday and he said that if you walk right out there in that direction, there's loads and loads and loads of shells. Because normally we go towards the island because that's like the end goal. But I've never just gone to the, you know, where the water drops off in that direction. So it might be worth trying that the other time. That's a pretty crab. It is a pretty crab, isn't it? He's quite cutie. Let's call it cutie, Dad. Okay. Cutie crab. That's... Ah, papa, papa. I have found the, uh, a really big, big coin. He could swim. Oh, Ooh. what, for the, the crab? <laughs> yeah, look. Oh. oh, that little one. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Whee! <laughs> it tickled me. <laughs> Over, Dad. You can turn him over? Yeah, because he got upside down, Dad. Good girl. Well done. That's very kind of you. What, the cave for him? Yeah, so he could say, save me, save me. Aww. <laughs> You're looking after the little hermit crabs. Aww. It's very nice of you. Yes, yeah, so nobody could take him away. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to come a day when all of this is going to be in the past and we're going to miss these little simple beach walks. Just Papa and Story walking along, looking for green shells. A couple of our patrons sent us one of our old videos from Portugal and said, do you remember this day? And it was Story crawling along the beach in Nazaré in Portugal. It was me talking about how I felt about life there at the time and how everything just felt so right at that given moment. And it was interesting for me because I don't actually remember saying any of it. We filmed so many videos over the last eight years, over a thousand, that you just spill and spill and spill your thoughts and then you forget about them. It's like a diary, isn't it? Yeah. Listening to myself back then talking about how we would buy a house there and that was like the place to settle and we needed to be more stable and secure and, and now we're thinking about, well we're not thinking about, we're actually moving to the Philippines with a three-year-old. Yeah. It's a totally different world and maybe in another three years from now we'll be looking back at these talks going god we thought that was the way yeah and i'll forget about everything 
And that's why I think it's so important for us to record these memories. Yeah. Because you can look back on how you were doing at that particular time, when the world was a certain way yeah. as well. Yeah, I remember that day. I remember how I felt on that day. It was a really happy day. We did say we wanted to move there and we wanted to like experience living in that area and we did mm. and we had our time there with story and we moved to portugal to be near family yeah and when she was a little baby that was really important for us like what we said in the q a video we done it's all about being able to adapt and be comfortable with changing your plan or mm. changing your thought pattern as things happen yeah and i feel like moving on from Portugal now it doesn't disregard what we said there because we had our four years there yeah and we experienced so much while we were there exactly and we do feel that we would go back there in the future yeah and maybe we will still buy a house oh, yeah. by the coast in Portugal but, but now we've experienced that chapter we now know what it's like so for the future yeah. when we are looking to buy somewhere or really settle down in a permanent home then we know that we've got that as an option as well because we've already lived there and we know what to expect yeah. going there. One thing that I have noticed about what I said that day that I didn't know at the time, we were talking about buying a house by the Silver Coast in the Portugal and at the time we didn't know about the fog, did we? Yeah. We hadn't actually lived at that point and we hadn't seen what it was like waking up in the mornings and trying to go out and just being completely obstructed to view with um, the fog that came at certain times of the year and after living there for a few months we started to say to ourselves would we want to buy a house in these conditions or would we want to go somewhere where it was clearer and also the wind yeah we didn't realize how windy it was there was times when we'd pack up a lovely picnic and head down to the beach get out the car and have to go home again because it was so windy yeah that it was just uncomfortable to be on the beach and the sand actually hurts you but that's just you know if you live somewhere permanently you wouldn't frequent the beach all the time maybe no. so but it's something we didn't know at that point when yeah. I was saying those messages yeah. as if somebody's gone to the paintbrush and just I know with this blue water looking absolutely like a mirror gorgeous. and then the painted clouds yeah, absolutely it's like every day a different scene isn't it and you can just see there's rain in the water there yeah absolutely. the little spots of rain you now dripping in the water I always used to wonder why people moved down to the Algarve in Portugal which is right at the bottom and after we'd lived on the Silver Coast and we saw the fog and we knew what the weather patterns were like we now understand why it is the most agreeable climate and so if you wanted to buy a permanent home down there that's where we would go. Well, push it up on them gently. It's so cute. How's it feel? Nice. Is it soft or rough? Uh, rough. Yeah. Is it rough mum? It is rough. Yeah. <laughs> if you can. Yeah, you can't eat your hair. You're not oh rough. Oh my goodness. <laughs> you silly you dog. You can't eat your hair. You oh silly boy. dog. <laughs> you can see his little legs underneath. See? Oh, uh, yeah. Check that out, Story. Look. Oh. They're walking. Oh, wow. Loads of little legs. Wow. I thought they were ants, was it? <laughs> That's how a starfish walks. Oh. It's clever, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> see? So I'm still holding it, but you're just pretending, yeah? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Did it touch That's you? <laughs> yeah, he's quite touching me. Okay, I'm gonna put him back yeah. now, yeah? Can we see what it feels like? Oh yeah. They're Spiky. like Yeah. Well they're not they're not sharp. Mm. But they they feel like little bits of plastic. Look yeah, at this. The spiky one is is, is just one We watched a video about this about a month ago. It's how the hermit crabs change their shells. They do it in a big conga line. Look. He 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 sleeps in, in, in the rocks, look. I see. He is, he's left, hasn't he? Well, has he left? He's left the party. So what they do is they all get in a line with the biggest shell at the front and the smallest shell at the back and the one from the line before moves into the bigger shell. They basically exchange shells. The one that needs the bigger one takes it from the one that's got the big one and they go yeah. all the way to the top, don't they? It's like a big shell party. Yeah, Look, this is it, they're in the big line now. Big one at the front, medium one and then small one. I don't think they're going to swap their shells while we're watching them, but that is really cool. This big crab here, he's looking at the purple shell in front of him. Once he runs into that empty one, the other two should jump in <laughs> to the ones behind them. Wow, look at the colour of that sky. It's so clear and fresh. Amazing, isn't it? It's like somebody's up to the saturation of the world. Going back to what I was saying earlier about moving country, 
I was thinking to when we first arrived in Chargao and we were asking about the weather, saying is it always going to be like this? Is it going to get hotter in the summer? Are there going to be more flies? All the kinds of things that you learn from being in a place for a while. And now that I know what the summer, spring feels like, I feel like I'm a little bit more prepared for what Chargao has to offer. Gold has led the way. We're following in her footprints. It's weird, isn't it? It's actually raining. I know. But there's no rain cloud. I know. <laughs> and the raindrops are warm. Yeah. <laughs> Lots of people keep asking us about the dogs here and what's going to happen to them when we move. And I've explained this before, but the main two dogs, King Kong and Moonshine, they actually belong to the resort owners. So they're fully looked after. They live actually in the restaurant area. And Gold is actually the neighbor's dog. So the boy, Jade Elmai, that came over a few times to draw his story, that's his dog. So we can't just take him when we leave. You know, taking somebody else's dog. So unless like some arrangement changes and I don't know, Gold is staying here. What's she up to? Oh. She um she was trying to catch some crabs to eat but she couldn't get it. <laughs> she she nice bed. Yeah? Yeah. It is nice. Nice and cool under the shady bit. She's smart. Actually I think she's looking for a crab because she did this the other day oh. and she pulled one out and she ate it. Oh. Back home. Sasha and I have been doing intermittent fasting now for about three months. It's really good for the health. And also we've added this into our morning routine, apple cider vinegar. It has to be the special type that's got with the mother on it. And you have a tablespoon of that with a glass of water before you eat anything. Apparently you're supposed to have it three times a day, but I've just been doing it once to start with. And yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing if we get any more additional health benefits. It is very interesting to look up the benefits of things like cacao powder to get iron and chia seeds to get omega-3. I remember thinking back to when I was younger, I never used to care about anything. And then when you get into your like late 20s, you start thinking about more. Especially now that the world is going through a health crisis, people are thinking more and more about how they can protect themselves from things. And I do reckon in another decade's time, when I'm like in my 40s, I'm going to be thinking more, even more, about what I should be eating and drinking. And where will we be in 10 years time, eh? Impossible to know. I just noticed that the plants that we put in this pot here, the leaves are going a bit yellow, so maybe they need a bit more shade. Those ones under there seem to be faring better. We're still learning. I have to get a few more of these, but that might do the job. So we've talked a little bit about where we would buy land if we were to move to Portugal, but here in the Philippines, we just don't know enough about the islands yet. We're very new to this place, of course, and we have a lot to learn. We already did three or four years in Portugal and that's why we can make a decision on what feels right. Here we have a lot to travel around, we have to see what it feels like on Chargao first. But one thing we did notice is that the price of land here and the price of properties here in Chargao is definitely much higher than it is in other parts of the Philippines. Loads of you guys that have been watching have confirmed that as well so it's a lot to think about and there's a lot to research. Saying that though, many of you have also confirmed that Chargao is extremely unique in comparison to other parts of the Philippines. So the things that we're feeling here, we might not feel in other parts and other islands. And because we've only been to Luzon and here, it's all we know at the moment. Very interestingly, we got featured by the Department of Tourism in their news article just recently. And that is something that doesn't normally happen to us until we've been making videos in the country for a very long time. So to have that happen so soon and to be noticed by the Department of Tourism is actually really, really interesting. When the lockdowns are lifted across the country, the Philippines is going to need a lot of tourism boosting. So hopefully we'll be able to get together with them and do some really cool stuff and maybe go and see some of the parts of the Philippines that we wouldn't have been able to find by ourselves. There's plenty of opportunities out there and we just need to see what happens day by day. I'll share the link below to the article that we found. There's also a lot of other YouTubers that got stranded here. Some of them you might know already like Mike and Nelly from Making It Happen and Jumping Places. And there's a couple of other guys in there that we hadn't seen before. So go check out the article and see what they said about us. It was really interesting to see. Check this out. I'm going to show you some of the cars we've been looking at buying recently. I did a search for Suzuki Jimny's <laughs> just to see what came up. Look at this boy here. That looks like a mini road warrior. And as I was scrolling down the list, I came across this one. It's a 1997 Suzuki Jimny. I've never seen one of these before. They look like mini Pajeros. And this one's really cheap. It's only 55,000 pesos. That's under a thousand pounds. One thing I have noticed that cars here seem to have done quite low mileage. And I think it's probably because 
traveling from island to island is pretty difficult logistics wise so maybe that reduces the miles or maybe people are just lying about how many miles they've done but for a 1997 cars i've only done 75,000 kilometers that's actually pretty good also check this out this is the car that we have in england right now we've got a blue version of this this car is actually quite near to us and supposedly it's only 160,000 so that's quite reasonable considering some of the prices of the cars i've seen here Something else I have noticed about some of these listings though is that the price they put here sometimes is just the down payment and then you have to take over the finance that they never finished paying off. So sometimes you'll see a really cool car for like, I don't know, 150,000 pesos. But then if you read the listing in more detail, it will say you need to pay like up to 2 million to finish paying for the car. One thing that's quite clear to us after these three or four months of traveling with Story is that she can make do in any kind of vehicle. She's been absolutely fine when we drove around in that old 1970s car through Thailand, all the bounces and bumps, she's been fine in this tuk-tuk and she's been fine in something newer. I do find that if we want Story to have a little rest, we need to have a car obviously that's got some windows and maybe some AC, especially in a country like this. And that's why something like that car that's on our land here probably wouldn't be suitable driving around with no windows and everything. And also I find it's quite exhausting when you've got like no protection from the wind. If you do a long journey, you feel completely wind battered. It's like riding a motorbike. So we definitely want to get a car that's enclosed. That's definitely a main criteria. Let's do some shout outs while we've got Story with us. Is that yeah. a good idea, Story? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Happy birthday, Amber Ray. Oh, yeah. that's lovely. That is Amber Ray's 31st yeah. birthday. Happy birthday, Amber. And this is from your mum, Jen. And hello to you, Jen. Hi. <laughs> Also to Danielle Barraquillo and your family in the San Francisco Bay Area misses you. Aww. And now a shout out to Cece from Virginia in the USA. Altea, a Filipino working in Belfast Island and they want to shout out also to all the colleagues at the Tennant Street Care Home. <laughs> shout <laughs> Hello, out everyone. to you guys. <laughs> Next we've got a family shout out and this goes to Mike and Joy and their daughters Mika and Tintin plus their doggies, Kimmy and Oreo. <laughs> oh, hello everyone. Hi. And a big hello to Haifa, who's 12 years old and actually messaged on Instagram asking about gold. Oh. She has a doggy as well and she's concerned that we're gonna leave gold behind. <laughs> <laughs> Next up we've got Aaron, who's watching from Dubai and his eight-year-old daughter has actually started her own YouTube channel. Yes. Clever Cheska. Okay. And I have actually been on there and I've seen the videos and they're really good. So we just wanna say, well done to you yep. for doing that keep with it because yep. i can see your subscribers are already going up so well done and well done to you for following your dream yeah keep it up and now shout out to christabel who requests a shout out for his wife daisy and their beautiful daughter cassandra hello and the last one we're going to do today is for franzeline sarad and you love watching our vlogs daily so thank you very much <laughs> that is it for today i hope you enjoyed today's video and don't forget we are actually releasing a second video today as well yes. which is going to be pretty epic and it's from <laughs> our journey yes. if you have only found us through watching our daily lockdown videos it is very different from these kind of videos that we've been doing so i hope you like it yeah it's called where the story began and it is about us and it's about story and it's about our journey so hope you enjoy it and we'll see you over there bye bye bye